Welcome to our lesson about using dimensions. Let's begin with a new part document, standard template, and OK. Here we are in the sketch environment. Sketch 1 is active. Let's start with a profile. Activate the line tool, and let's create a vertical line about 1 inch high. Left click to place the second point. Now a horizontal line or perpendicular. Next, an arc. One more line, and a line at an angle. Here a line parallel to the first line. I'll move until I see the tracking line. As you see here, it's dotted blue. Let's left click, and then let's close the profile. The green dot at the end here indicates a coincident relation. Let's left click to close the profile, and here we are. Now let's activate the dimension tool. First, I'll select this line and drop a dimension about here. The Edit Dimension dialog window opens, and if you don't see this editing window, you can make sure that it turns on automatically by going to the Tools tab, Application Options, Sketch tab. Just ensure that Edit Dimension when created is checked. For that change to take effect, however, you will need to exit the sketch and then reactivate it. Let's close. And let's enter 2 inches. Click OK. Now I'm going to dimension this vertical line. Instead of selecting this line, I'm going to select this line. Drop the dimension about here. It'll be 1 inch. And click OK. Now let's dimension this line here. I'll select it. Notice that when I move my mouse, I toggle between vertical and horizontal dimensions. I can also right-click and select an Align dimension, for example. There's the Align dimension. Let's right-click and select the vertical dimension. And right-click, Horizontal. Let's stick with the horizontal dimension, make it half an inch. OK. In the status bar, by the way, we still see that we need six dimensions. Let's select this line. Now instead of entering a numeric value here, I'm going to select this dimension here and divide it by 3. I'll just type the formula right into the input field and then click OK. This applies a formula that makes dimension 3 three times smaller than dimension 1, which is 1 inch. All right, let's click Accept. Now if I double-click here and enter 3 quarters of an inch, 0.75, OK. Notice that this dimension changes as well. Let's change this dimension back to 1 inch. Notice that when I apply this dimension, the sketch changed unexpectedly. To fix this, I'm going to apply a collinear relation between this line and this line. However, you won't always be able to fix a situation like this. Sometimes you'll just need to click Undo and then apply a different dimension or constraint. There's another solution I could try, for example, in this situation. I could apply a coincident constraint between the left corner point and the origin point. By the way, I'd need to project the origin point first. Let's right-click and select Done. And let's try a collinear constraint. We'll select this line and this line. And this action fixes our situation. Let's undo. Now let's project the origin point. Select Center Point in our tree. Project Geometry. Right-click and Done. Now let's apply a coincident relation between this point and the origin point. This resolves our situation as well. Let's apply a collinear relation now. We'll select this line and this line. Most of our profile is blue. We see in the status bar that two dimensions, however, are still needed. Once again, to see where we need dimensions and relations, just grab and drag a point. And let's undo. 
Let's place a radial dimension here and position the dimensions for this point. Let's make it quarter of an inch. Accept. And lastly, this dimension here, we'll make it half an inch. Accept. The whole sketch is in dark blue, and we see that the sketch is fully constrained in the status bar. Let's add one more dimension. I'll add an angular dimension right here. Inventor gives me a warning. Adding this dimension will over-constrain the sketch. Choose Accept to create a driven dimension. Let's accept. And now our angular dimension is a driven dimension. We see it here in parentheses. That indicates that it's a driven dimension. If I double click, you see that I'm not able to edit it, and that's because it's a driven dimension rather than a driving dimension. Let me show you an example of why we may need a driven dimension. Let's create a triangle here. And now let's apply some dimensions. Here, let's say 0.3. Here, 0.4. And let's dimension the hypotenuse as well. Right click, select Aligned. And accept. Once again, we get a warning message. Let's accept to make the hypotenuse a driven dimension. Now, when I change one dimension, for example, the 0.4 inch dimension, it allows us to monitor how the hypotenuse changes. One more thing to go over in this lesson. Let's right click and select Done. Now right click again and scroll to Dimension Display. We can choose a few items to display, for example, value. And let's display the name this time. Let's try displaying the expression. As you can see, let's scroll down a little bit. At dimension 3, we see the formula that we applied earlier. It's clearly visible that dimension 3 is related to dimension 1. Let's right click again, and this time we'll display tolerance. Lastly, right click and display precise value. By the way, two dimensions are still required, so let's sort that out. Let's apply a fix constraint to this point here. And now our sketch is fully constrained. And this concludes our lesson about using dimensions.